Hello everybody and welcome to my next tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to be teaching you about the enemy class. Now the enemy class isn't really complicated. It just takes a quite a bit of code so I've already coded it for you. So in the end you will have something like this or similar to this. You have the enemy that can move a certain range depending on what you set it to. So right now my range is set to 200 and the initial position of the enemy and the, the original expedition of the enemy is 200. So it moves 200 spaces to the right. Then when it reaches its origin position, it moves 200 spaces to the left. So if you notice when it moves to the left, it hits the wall because it's going 200 spaces to the left and then bouncing back going to the right. Right? So now let's go to our tutorial. So create an enemy.h and an enemy.cpp. So let's go to our enemy.h. And if I'm going a bit too fast in the tutorial, you can pause the video and just copy the code. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with pausing the video. I just don't want to make the videos too long because I want to get this tutorial over it so you guys can have your platformer. So let's include Allegro um, .h, the F stream, and C math. That's a new one. You'll see why we need this later. This is optional. And these are the guard tags if you don't know what I'm talking if those if you don't know what those are. Now in our enemy class, in the private section, we have X, Y, speed, range, counter, range, direction, level, width, height, and increase, all within the array of ten. The array of ten is gonna signify how much enemies we have in total. Obviously we're gonna have more than ten enemies in total, but since these maps are so small, these tutorials, and um since I just, it's just for the sake of this tutorial, I can increase it later on. So, you have two more variables, load counter and amount of enemies. Load counter is going to, um, this is what we've been using throughout all our, like, map and collision map and all that stuff. Just basically to process through the different arrays. And amount of enemies is the amount of enemies that we actually have um, in our whole all together right uh so now we have our constructor and our destructor we have our init and our update function it has a parameter in level our draw function has bitmap buffer as usual but it has an added one int level also now in our load enemies function we have constant char file name as we're going to be loading our enemy file stuff from a file name because it makes it easier that way and we're gonna put our move uh, and the reason why we put in a text file is because sorry as we put in a text file because if we ever want to change the position of enemies and stuff instead of recompiling it which takes up a little bit of time we could just change it in our text file and then no recompiling is needed because the stream stuff is done at runtime so this our move function has a parameter in level and this is just the end to our guard tag and the end to our class so let's go to enemy.cpp. Let's scroll up to a net. Now there's a, there might be some stuff you don't understand. Basically our net load count is equal to zero. Amount of enemies is equal to zero. And we have our function load enemies, which in turn is gonna actually change the value of the amount of enemies we actually have, right? And it's gonna load our enemies and all that stuff. You'll see this later. So we have a for loop. Um, according to the amount of enemies, note that it's after load enemies as we change the amount of enemies in the load enemies function. So it has to be after. So range, I set all the range counters to zero. And I have a rand variable called integer rand and it, it's a random number between one and two. So if the random number is one, then we set increase to true. And if it's um equal, if uh, like if it's equal to two, then we set increase to false. Easy enough. Now you're wondering why do we have range counter and increase. Well I already told you the range is the amount of distance where it goes right and left. Right? From its origin position. So what the range counter does is that it counts how much each, how many spaces it's moved already. So if it reaches limit, so if the range counter is equal to 200, then it needs to know that it needs to know that it needs to change direction. So that's what the um, and then our increase i for our increase is gonna say that if we should add to our range counter 
or subtract from a range counter. And in turn, this is actually going to make it that it moves 200 um, spaces from our origin position, right? Because if we only set, um, it was kind of confusing to explain, but with this method, we'll be able to move it 200 spaces right from its origin position, and then turn 200 spaces left from its origin position. So if it starts moving right at first, then when it hits the, if it, it doesn't really matter if I is increases equal to true or increases equal to false. It doesn't really matter, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we learn about random functions and random stuff. So might as well use it. But basically, if you were only to basically if you move 200 spaces right, then to get to the 200 spaces left, you're actually moving 400 spaces left, right? To actually get the effect of 200 spaces from the origin position. Now that sounds confusing, but there's an easy way to go about this, right? And you'll see later in the move function. So let's go to the load enemies function. So basic, we um, open the file stream from the file name. If it's open, then we do a while loop until the end of the file. And we're going to get the X, Y, speed, direction, range, level, width, and height. And we're going to increase load counter plus one and amount of enemies plus one. And this is where we increase the amount of enemies in our program. And you already know what the load counter does. If you don't know, then you should be watching my early tutorials. And then we just reset load counter equal to zero. And if it's not open, then we just put a Allegro message, could not locate the enemy file, then you can close the game screen or whatnot. Uh now you're saying that like what what is the level for? This is in our text file we're gonna say what level the enemy should be placed on. So if it's level one we'd put zero for the level if it's level two we'd put um we put one and for level three we put two in our text file because it's equal to the uh, um the array the the level um array right so basically that's all the level is now you could have th you could have do like the map and the collision map file you could have an enemy one dot text and enemy two dot text enemy three dot text and have them each for each level but for enemies i think this would just be easier to put it all in one text file it's easier to manage this way